Hi everyone, Amichai here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a short C-sharp riddle that most of the developers that have been trying to answer this question in the past few days have been getting wrong. If you haven't seen the riddle or haven't tried to solve it yet, then pause the video, take a look and try to guess what the correct answer is. In this video, we're going to break this question down and understand why this question is confusing and what are the tricks that have to do with it. If you got the wrong answer, then you definitely want to watch until the end because these are very common bugs. And since everyone's working with link and with tasks in their applications, then you might be introducing these kinds of bugs into your applications. Okay, I do have a quick disclaimer if you're new to the channel. So even though I'm a Microsoft employee and some of these technologies are Microsoft technologies, I'm not talking on behalf of Microsoft. These are my personal opinions. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the results that we got. So here are the results from YouTube. Most of the people chose the same answer, both in Twitter and in LinkedIn. Same variations of the same core question, each platform with its maximum characters for the poll. So the question is a bit different, but the core concept is the same and the same wrong answer in all of them. If you're trying to guess what's the correct answer and you aren't saying this answer over here, then you are wrong as well. So the correct answer is other or something else. And let's break it down. Now, there are two things to notice about this question. The first one is that we're working with I enumerables. And the second one is that we're working with tasks, each one with its own trick. So since we're working with enumerables, if you aren't familiar with this yet, then you definitely should be. Over here in this line, where we're defining the enumerable, we aren't actually executing anything yet. Okay, the first place in the application in which this function over here is executed is actually over here. Okay, so let's break this down. Okay, so the first line over here is we're generating an enumerable sequence. Now the range method receives a start and an end and it'll run from the start until one before the end. So in our case, it will generate the number zero, then the number one. And for each one of these numbers, then we're simply ignoring the number and creating this task over here, which basically prints the star to the screen. Okay, now again, nothing happened yet. So if we would run the application and over here, we would wait forever, but not invoke the enumerable, then these tasks wouldn't be executed and nothing would be printed to the screen. Then over here, we are actually awaiting the two tasks. That's when they're enumerated and this method over here is invoked and then the tasks are actually created. We'll look into the task part of it in a few minutes. So for now, this is the first invocation and that's where we would expect to have two stars already. Then over here, we're calling the count method. Now count tries not to enumerate the enumerable, but it will if it can't not enumerate it. Okay, so in our case, it enumerates the collection again. And this thing is invoked again, causing the same enumerable to be executed twice, you should definitely be aware of this. Great. So that's the first part. So like we said, over here, we're enumerating the enumerable. And over here, we're enumerating again, causing this thing over here to be invoked four times instead of two times. Now, what do you think is going to be the output. Now that you have this information, if I run the application, what do you think will be printed? Okay, so maybe, let's see if you're right. So let me run it. And as you guessed, we have four stars and then the string two stars. Is this what you guessed? Okay, now you might be asking yourself, why in this particular order? And then you might say, ah, oh, okay, I see, I see. Because over here, we're interpolating the string, right? So before you can create the string, then you first need to enumerate the entire thing. And if you enumerated the entire thing, then you already printed the two stars to the screen. And that's why you have four in a row and then two stars. So if that's what you're thinking, then you are wrong, okay? Now let's run the application again and hope we get a different response. As you can see, now we have the star in the end, okay? Now this brings us to the second part of this question, which is the tasks where they actually run and what is guaranteed to be printed on the screen and what isn't, okay? So before we start, 
the what I want you to notice is the following that when we reach this part over here, then the application will terminate, right? This is the end of our application. And also over here, we are awaiting some of the tasks. Okay, now I want us to visualize it. So let's do the following. Let's say that we have over here, the main thread, then in pink, we have over here, our thread pool. Okay, so let's put this in a box. And let's also put here, thread pool. And let's put over here, main thread. Now I want us to look what actually runs on each thread. So we arrive over here, right? So up until the first await, we're running on the main thread. Let's imagine that we arrived here, then over here, we're creating a new task. Now tasks by default, run on the manage thread pool, which means that we can take this thing and say, Okay, you are running on the thread. pool. So it's running on the thread pool. And as part of its execution, it creates these two tasks. Okay, now again, task by default run on the thread pool. Now you don't need to await a task for it to start running. So once you wrote task dot run, then it starts running the task. Okay, so this we have two tasks running on the thread pool. Okay, so we have our two tasks from the enumerable being executed. Again, we can't guarantee the order between them because each one of them is on a different thread or on the same thread, we don't own it, we don't know. But once they have completed, then this task over here will have its state as completed, right? So these two complete, and then also this completes, then the code can continue executing. Now, the only reason why we know for sure that the two first stars will be printed to the screen is because of this await over here, because our main application won't terminate until this line is executed. And that's why we know these two stars will be printed to the screen. Okay, now we continue. Now it's not necessarily on the main thread. Okay, so this could be on the thread from the thread pool that this task arrived at. But for simplicity, let's imagine that we continue on the main thread. Okay, so we can continue working with this beautiful UI that I'm working on. Okay, okay, so we arrive at this line over here. And now we're enumerating the collection again. Okay, so this over here is executing on the thread that we're on again, for now, let's imagine that we're on the main thread. So we're over here, and we're enumerating over them. So you can really imagine this just move next, move next, move next, sum the number of elements and return that number. But like we said, again, these two tests over here are being created and sent to the thread pool. Okay, and the second trick of this question is that the only reason why this star and this star are being printed to the screen is because that executing this last line takes longer than it took these two stars to be printed. Okay, so they won't necessarily be printed again, they're over here in the thread pool. If this line would have completed, then the application would terminate, and we wouldn't see these stars at all. Okay, to demonstrate this, it's very easy, all we need to do is take this turn it into a block body, and put here some delay, let's say 10 milliseconds should be enough. Let's await it and make this entire thing async. And let's run the application again. And what we expect to happen is that it'll take these two tasks longer to execute than this line last line over here. And we simply won't see the stars. And that's exactly what happened. Okay, so that's it. That's the riddle. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, then let me know in the comments because I love these kind of riddles. And I have many more where this came from. And I think it's actually a good way to demonstrate these small principles. It's very important to notice to think about this stuff, right? So if you aren't awaiting some of your tests, you may not get the result and you may have some unexpected behavior. So these are stuff that are very, very important to know. And I do want to leave you with one riddle to see if you really understood what we talked about today. So let's imagine that instead of this, we had something else. Let's say we simply created here an array. Let's put this on a new line. And let's say over here, we have our two definitions. Again, same thing like before. So console dot right, right. And we're printing a star. And we have another one. Same thing like before. Okay, so running this, what do you think will be the output? Okay, so it's similar to what we had before, but maybe it's different. 
maybe it's not. So let me know what you think. Maybe I'll actually, you know what? You know what? I'll create a poll with this question. Let me know there what you think. And let's see if you internalized the concept that we talked about, or maybe there's some stuff that we should dig deeper into. Okay, so that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying this channel. It's been a crazy ride for the past two months. Only whoever worked on a YouTube channel knows how much work this actually is, especially when you have a little baby at home. So if you enjoy it, make sure to give a like and subscribe. And if you really, really enjoy it and you want to motivate me to continue and pay for the equipment that I'm buying, then feel free to become a Patreon. The tier is only $5. You get access to the source code. And every time I see a Patreon, I'm like, oh my God, maybe I should take more time and create these videos. So if you want, you could actually put more than $5. Don't even ask your husbands and wives. Just simply go there, take the bar, or I don't know how it's configured, but select the highest amount that you can or can't afford and, and do it. I think you shouldn't. Don't think twice. Do it. Just do it. That should be a slogan. Just do it. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.